Tuesday, November 14th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich, and what a morning. We had the CPI come out that was up very slightly, apparently a lot less than what the investing public uh, was expecting, therefore very bullish. As a result, <clears throat> now the expectation of interest rates changing uh, the next time around are a lot less, and everybody's now starting to think, like no surprise, that rates are going to be flat for quite a while and probably start to go down uh, sometime, maybe late next year. So the E-mini has jumped like crazy and the other indexes this morning. And we've got some big gaps to show you. But this is the December, oh, no, sorry, the continuation contract. And it's now yellow, important. It's overbought. The last time we were yellow or overbought was at the top of the market on the exact high day, July 27th, which was also an ER sell signal. Now, I don't think I'm going to get a sell signal today. That's for darn sure. But uh, we are overbought. I am expecting this market to top out go right around where it is. Now, I said that the last couple of days down here, and it was wrong because the CPI was not what um, the general marketplace was looking for. And with it being so low, a minor increase, the jump was substantial, but it doesn't change the technical situation. It makes it more bearish. Now, um, resistance area, overbought conditions, we're probably gonna see the beginning of a break ASAP. Next chart is, the spider itself, I'm sorry, the NASDAQ, and I am in the wrong area. I apologize for that. The uh, December E-mini overbought. Okay, fine. We're going to come back to a minimum of 44.35, okay? I'm expecting it to probably drop down even more than that. And I do want to point something out. I was expecting that we would have another two or three, four days down this week and down into the approximate 4260 area. And that would create a last shoulder low on a head and shoulder bottom. It didn't happen. If you want to call the lows uh, Thursday and Friday of last week, the last shoulder low, it's very stunted, very small, and not the typical the timing is okay, a little early, but certainly not the right price. It should have been down into this ballpark area and a few days into the future. Hey, that didn't happen. <clears throat> but the market's made new highs and now overbought. Maybe we'll get up to the red zone at 45, 47 first and then turn down, but that's awful close now. I just think this thing is going to turn right back down again. I can't help it. Next chart is a big gap up in the spider. The three gaps I've been talking about for several days now are extremely less likely to be closed. Maybe we'll see the highest one close now at 431. I'm doubting that. The downside correction after this kind of a rally and relative stability so far uh, might stop on the downside at 438 and a half, just where the low was yesterday. Wow. Uh, I need to have this gap closed. I think it's a short-term exhaustion gap, sort of. But look what we're doing here. That was the October lows. The only thing I'm missing is a bullish green engulfing, which I got last year on October 13th in most of the indexes. And we got a red one at the top of the market on July 27th, but unfortunately not this year in October, simply support area and significant oversold conditions. And I said it was likely to turn up, but no reversal. Now, the exact opposite almost. So let's look for a minor short-term correction to close the gap we just created this morning. And I'm not going to be surprised to see it make new lows today. I wouldn't expect it to come down and close the gap completely today. Next chart. We have big upside gap on the one-minute chart on the spider. This is yesterday's close, 1 o'clock California time. 
And then, boom, this morning at 6.30 a.m., here we are right now. So we've hit a high, pulled back a little bit, and then starting to come up again. Next chart is the Qs. And this has gapped up also and almost making a new high for how long? Since historic highs. <clears throat> going back all the way to January of 22. That's almost two years ago. So we're close to a new high for two years almost. But we gapped up. We've been overbought now on the queues for four days. Again, perfect conditions for a downside retracement. It's not the beginning of a bear move. It's a minor bearish correction and a bull trend. And by December, I think the queues will be a new high ground for the last two years, and maybe even better than that. This index has been leading the way up on the average, and it continues to do so, and I expect it to, that to continue. The Russell is the one that was the softest, the most bearish. Next chart, NASDAQ futures, almost new highs. And they have been since the beginning of August, the highest high. But again, overbought, going to start down, gap up on the DIA, right behind the Qs, but still bumping against a little resistance. Gaps are almost always closed. And today's gap looks like a prime target for a gap closure in the next few days. Maybe it'll take a week or two, but probably less. Next, big gap up in the Russell index, but it has something a lot more obvious than the other indexes. The decline in the last several days, other than yesterday and today, has been low enough to close not only the higher gap, but some of the lowest gap and low enough to be considered a shoulder low. This is the last shoulder low at the end of last week, Friday. The head of the formation was on October 27th, and the first shoulder low was on October 4th. Not a very big formation, but this is a month and a fraction. Very normal, typical size. The neckline, oh my gosh, we just rallied in one day up to and through the neckline today. All it needs to do now is stay above this neckline it could come all the way back to it. That's not un abnormal, at least halfway back to it. That would be typical. So somewhere in here and turn right around and make new highs again. We might still get up to this gap closure at 179.80-ish before that little correction back down to the neckline happens, but we're already halfway there. So somewhere in here very shortly, and this is not overbought yet. Notice it's not yellow. And the RSI at the bottom, remember this is a custom RSI. I learned RSI from Wells Wilder himself back in the 80s and 90s, 70s and 80s, actually. Um, so it's not exactly the same as his, but you know, similar and similar to Stochastics, George Lane's, you know, was a good personal friend. Um, developed, both very, very usable, good oscillators, just have to learn how to use the tool, that's all. So maybe a little bit more strength. I'm thinking probably not. And then a correction. Okay, let's go look at the October low chart again. I had tried to peg 407.5 to 406 as the price level at which the market was going to bottom out. And I thought it was going to be close to the middle of um, October. But it was 409.20. I missed by a point and a half or something. And uh, it was late later in the month. My price was close. Uh, timing was off. Look what we've got so far. Unbelievable rally. I have to say it actually is similar to last year, except for last year, we did get a bullish engulfing at the bottom on October 13th. Look what happened after that one. Zoom. Look what happened after this low overbought. I'm sorry, oversold, sorry. <laughs> and almost at a minimum downside objective on a sloppy 
not so good head and shoulder top. This six days here should not have happened above the neckline. That is usually not part of the formation. Up to the line, yeah, but not above it. So that's why I stopped tracking the head and shoulder when it was staying above for those six days, the neckline. Anyway, in the end, it ended up almost working perfectly. Here we are now, total new situation, the continuation of the long-term bull market. I love it, very bullish. Futures, futures, futures. First chart is gonna be the NASDAQ futures. And we are overbought. Broke the bear trend line, tried to come back down, bearish engulfing, didn't work. Next day, stopped out minor losses, but we've been out now for three days, third day today. Um, mistakes happen. Don't let them get out of hand. Discipline, as far as your protective stops are concerned, are extremely, probably the most important key that you can possibly achieve correctly in any trading system. The profits will come by themselves if you can control your losses, so to speak. Now, overbought, about to come down. Next, the bonds. Here we go. I'm sorry, I've got to talk about a head and shoulder again, sort of. I thought that this was a chance, October 6th, to be a shoulder low. We did get the bottom. We got a bullish engulfing on the damn low day of the bond market, period. This is a new high and likely a new high close since our buy signal on October 23. This last six out of eight days, I believe it way out, six out of eight days, I had a low almost exactly at the same price. And that, if it was lower, hopefully around 109 and a half, but it didn't happen, would have been a shoulder low. The neckline would have slanted upward slightly over these highs. And we touched the neckline on today's rally high. Almost exactly, you'll see in a moment on the 10 year notes. But there's no markings here. You have to use your imagination a little bit. And again, the last shoulder low just isn't there. Timing is okay. Everything else is okay, but there's no decline for the damn shoulder. Next, the shoulder occurred on the 10 year notes. We even got a bearish engulfing sell signal, dropping it down a couple of days to make the shoulder low. This is an ER3 trade in progress. Uh, we bought it when it retraced back into uh, approximately the middle of the bullish signal, which was on October 23rd, almost the exact low day. And we bought it long um, at 105.31 and a half on October 25th, right there. You see these green and red dots. That's where we tried to buy it within a lot of amount of time. We did it, closed with a small loss, profit pretty much all the time since today is the best. We're, we're just doing great, just doing great. Now here it is. The neckline was touched perfectly at today's rally high so far. I think it'll stay that way today. What we could do for a couple of days is fiddle around sideways, maybe even back down close, like 107.15 or somewhat higher. And in a few days or a week, run through this, gap through this, jump through this neckline. It should have high volume, and I don't talk about volume very often. Uh, and it should be a substantial up day. And that'll be the breakout. I haven't measured you the upside objective at a minimum yet, but I can ballpark it real quick. Five, 10, so we got six, 10, one point, seven, 10, two points, and eight, 10, three points and a half, let's say. So what is three and a half points above nine? Well, that's your answer, 12 and a half. So way up here is my approximate minimum upside objective for the bonds. Next chart. <clears throat> um, ten year notes I meant. So, and bonds are going to do the same thing. Crude oil, oversold, rallying, almost touched the resistance I was talking about yesterday and the day before, likely. Maybe even the day before that. But, eh, I think it's about to stop rallying and turn down. Not too sure about that. 
it looks like this has already stopped rallying, turned down, and this is the natural gas. I'm thinking that maybe this support level is not going to hold this time around, and we could have a very bearish long-term. Yeah, it looks like wheat and corn, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, sure does. Natural gas could turn very bearish. Next, we're looking at heating oil, head and shoulder top with multiple shoulders. Left shoulder, inside left shoulder, top of the market, a little triple high there. Last shoulder, last shoulder. Neckline touched two days ago. After, actually, a little bit of a break, but not much. It closed above it. Rallied. Now we may be finished. This could be about to break below the neckline. The minimum downside objective is 2.1306, if you want to get accurate. And that's silly because I just want to get super close or, you know, drop below it. That, that means it worked pretty much. Okay, this is right in front of us now. I'm trying to tell you the next couple of months are going to hold. If I'm right, gold. <clears throat> Sell signal almost on the high day. Green is always a buy signal. Reds always sell on the low exactly. The low exactly. The high exactly. I had another one. Oh, yeah, over here. The low exactly and that high exactly. All this year. I have to be bear still. Sell signal. This is the first decent rally we've had after the decline. So I think it's going to fizzle out very quickly and start to make new lows. I'm first downside objective of any consequences in 1,913-ish. And I'm not ruling out by any means 1850. Next. Silver. I'm still looking for more of a downside move. I think this rally is going to fail, and I'm looking for a test of the 20.3 quarters, a little under 21. Next. Um, kind of the same commentary for platinum. Coming up too quick, too fast, right at resistance in here. And I think it's going to fail and turn down and make a lower low very soon, next few days, and finally get to this longer-term major support area, which is uh, 129 and a little under. Next. Boy, I've got the same comment here about copper, too. Uh, resistance area, I think it's going to stop the rally. <clears throat> uh, looking for um, a new low for a few months. Uh, actually, a year. Yeah, it'll be a new low for a year if we get below 3.5. Next chart. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, soybeans. A little resistance is being tested. We had a bullish position, stopped out a couple of days ago. Very good trade, nice profitable trade. Don't cry over spilt milk. You're never going to catch the exact low. Well, <laughs> unless you use the ER trading system, then you're going to catch the lower high day sometimes. Really, sincerely. You can see it. I'm not, you know, I do this every day. So um, resistance, overbought conditions, almost it's going to stop rallying and turn back down, in my opinion. We just got stopped out finally from our fabulous soybean oil short position after, one day after the high day. The high of a double top, second high of a double top. And it was the top, basically, of a head and shoulder top, which had a breakout on, what was it, September 26th, uh, maybe a couple of days later, uh, September 28th on a closing basis. And the minimum downside of a fifth, a minimum downside objective of 50, we talked about for weeks. There it is. It happened. And it got oversold when it got there. Come on. Great combination. And here we are up quite a bit. Now that bear move is over. That pattern worked. And what next? Well, a rally back up to the neckline or the resistance area, which is kind of the same thing is not out of the question, but I'm going to be waiting a little bit to be a little more cocky about it. Next, soybean meal, un unbelievable strength here, still overbought. I thought maybe yesterday was a high day and there's a chance of that, but 
that's coming back awful strong, awful steady. And that's after it opened unchanged and dropped way down and then it came back again. Well, I'll have to wait here, but most signs say very toppy, but it ain't doing it yet. Next, corn. Bullish engulfing yesterday caused me to be a little friendly and we're up a little today. I think it may even come back up again to 492, but there's a very good chance it could quit before that. This is a long, long-term bear market like wheat, and we looked at something else that was similar. Um, what was it, heating oil or something? Unleaded, and um, that must have been heating oil. So I'm looking for lower lows. I'm looking for the rally high, and it's not gonna be too much more. Maybe 20, 15 cents next wheat for now a couple of months lower lows rally failed lower lows rally almost new lows rally no new high and going sideways for a couple of days i'm looking for lower levels and new low ground next oversold conditions finally caught two days ago on friday rather little yesterday and popping up pretty good today in live cattle this resistance area might get tested. We're just barely getting out of what was sold relative to the low of the day. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a stop rallying at 182, 181 and a half and turn back down again. I'm bearish. Next, we're out of a previous great trade in hogs and uh, inside doji a little down on the day at the moment. Resistance seems to have stopped the rally and not surprised um, that didn't get overbought, which it would have been better. But I think it's going to be bouncing back and forth here between these two support and resistance areas uh, till we have a breakout. Next, bearish, uh, res bullish resistance line. When you say bullish, it trends up. When you say resistance, you're underneath it. Usually a bullish trend line is referred to as a support line when you're trading over it and you keep going up. But anyway, this didn't block it very long, a little while this morning, and plowed right through it. So this is my OJ. I still got to tell you, I think that was incredibly important on October 31st and may still be the high of the market. Right now, I'm a little bit perplexed and not sure how much more strength we might get or when it's going to turn around. We're getting closer to overbought. Let's see what happens. Mum's the word momentarily. Wow, finally, cocoa. Huge, just like orange juice, bearish engulfing. And I told you this would be brewing for quite a long time. So finally, I've got my signal. So now we are short ER1 just a little bit below yesterday's low at, let's call it 40 or 4,000 amount. Yeah, a hair above, but we're trading at the low of the day, almost low and last and below two previous trading days and starting to eliminate the overbought condition. This could come all the way back down to 3,700 and not even be a big correction, a medium to small. So I'm looking for 3,770 or more on the downside. We've got coffee stalling out here last three or four days. A little toppy looking, definitely a little resistance area. Just look to the left across my cursor here, my crosshairs. You can see how many times the market has trouble going down or up through that price range. And it's not an exact price. Usually it's a very small zone, but it can be a little bit larger than a small zone, as long as it's not ridiculously large. So um, I think it's going to start slipping more. Next sugar ah, i gotta say the same thing here resistance seemed to have stopped it poked through it a little bit couldn't stay there bearish engulfing on the high day love that and we've got another bearish engulfing maybe today i think it is below yesterday's low by a couple of ticks so watch out this is about to come down to this line at a very bare minimum which is nothing really 2650 but that's going to get broken we're awfully close and just beginning this so I think we're about to break that line this time down. Next, support held, oversold 
helped a lot. And here we are continuing the rally I look for in cotton, the rag. Maybe it's going to get right back up to the resistance level again. Yeah, you know, a ping pong ball back and forth, back and forth. We've got a few markets that are doing that, and cotton's one of them. And we're back to the E-mini, still near its high. Let's go take a quick peek at the short term. And let me get that chart. Here we are. Okay, so the one-minute chart on the E-mini, S&P Spider, same thing, has stalled out a few minutes ago on a rebound, failed to make a new high, and starting to slip a little. If we start moving underneath, start dropping below 447.80, it's going to get a little bit interesting. It could probably start to drop a lot more real quick. Remember, when markets do what this has done, they're reacting to some kind of bearish, uh, bullish new news that was unexpected. And now all of those surprise reactions, and a lot of them are emotional, uh, have built their way into the market. Now, frankly, it doesn't take this long. And that was from the opening all the way until about mm, over two hours later or something, close to two hours later, not quite. And then it topped out. The reaction I was just describing usually takes like five or 10 minutes and then boom, it goes right back down again. You guys have a great day. Profitable trading to you.